Hi, it's Richard. This video reviews the features of our Tracker DWM indicator. Tracker DWM focuses on higher time frame price. You can see here how it fits in amongst our other indicators that track your important time, price, and volume references across the low, mid, and higher time frames. I suspect most day traders struggle to incorporate the higher time frames into a consistently profitable trading strategy. So before jumping into describing the indicator features, let's take a few minutes to discuss how you might effectively day trade using the higher time frames. By higher time frame, I mean daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. When considering these time frames, there are four important points to make. First, for equities, I use RTH charts for these time frames because investment charts use RTH. I don't know why NinjaTrader adopted ETH only charts for these time frames. When I trade ES, I expect its price to be arbitraged back to the S&P 500 cash index, which is RTH only. If you are trading other instruments, make sure the session template you pick is the better choice. Don't let the limitation of your charts and data feed limit how you see or trade the markets. Second, I don't trade directly from the daily, weekly, or monthly charts. I have these charts tabbed in one workspace. I look at them for a minute before the start of each session to assess market context. My goal is to anticipate what investors that only use these charts are likely to do. I then want to coordinate a day trading entry to coincide with higher time frame participation. I want to piggyback my lower time frame trade onto their higher time frame trade. To do this, however, I need to get the key higher time frame information onto my trade entry chart so that I can use it to enter and manage my trades. It took me a long time to realize that having information is completely different from using information. I will go you one better here. I see far more trades and they are far easier to see using Tracker DWM running on my lower time frame chart than it is to see these charts directly from the daily, weekly, and monthly charts. Third, you can use the higher time frame information in two general ways. You can use it in a broader sense to anticipate where price might try to reverse. For example, you might see a zone form back and forth across a specific price with multiple attempts before it holds or fails. Markets are two-sided and love to trap and hunt stops, so this is all par for the course. You can also use the higher time frame information more precisely, where you see that specific price reference tested and hold for a go with trade or alternatively tested and trapped for a trade the other way. This precision can be as tight as to the exact tick. To take this thinking a step further, if there are two or more higher time frame references nearby, but clearly separate, you might anticipate some traders will use one reference while other traders use the other reference. Here then, we can anticipate a trading range to form as price goes back and forth seeking direction. The fourth and last point to make is perhaps more of a rhetorical question. Where do you think the best trades originate? By best, I mean trades that go the longest, fastest, and straightest in your favor. How does time frame factor into your answer? And how are your charts set up so you are ready to profit from these best opportunities? Okay. So hopefully I've convinced you that higher time frames play an important role in day and swing trading. Let's turn our attention now to our lowest time frame trade entry chart. I use Tracker DWM on my trade entry chart. Here you can see the four tracker indicators on this chart. I load five days of data. And here now you will see that I use an ETH session template. I also have Tracker DWM loaded onto a second chart off to the side on my second monitor. I use that chart when I need to zoom out for better perspective, so I will adjust its bar period as needed 
by anywhere from 3 to 20 times higher than my trade entry chart. The purpose of Tracker DWM is to put the higher time frame price references onto these two lower time frame charts. It does it automatically, accurately, and neatly organizes it off to the side. Tracker DWM is perhaps my favorite indicator. It helps me identify many trades per week. Having done the reference tracking manually for months before I coded the indicator, I know it takes enough time and effort such that most retail traders won't do the work to invest in their own success. That alone gives me a trading edge. As retail traders, we have the odds stacked against us. So if indeed this is a David and Goliath fistfight, it certainly doesn't serve me to show up wearing a blindfold. The next obvious question is what trading styles can benefit from using Tracker DWM? The short answer is those styles that benefit from higher time frame insight into selecting trade direction and trade location. Consider support and resistance trading. Yes, many of the Tracker DWM references are in fact support and resistance references. The references are well known, static or dynamic references that are visible to a great many traders and investors. Next, consider supply and demand trading. Yes, many supply and demand zones form around and after the reference is tracked. So a trader can anticipate where a future supply or demand zone may form and potentially attach greater significance to that zone being retested because that area means something to other traders using different styles. So how about price action traders? Yes, whether you are an Al Brooks style or a second entry trader or some other style, you can look for entries at and supported by the Tracker DWM references and be wary when you enter headlong into such references. Tracker DWM can enhance all of these trading styles, assisting you with trade context, direction, and location. We have one more important issue to address. How do you even get higher time frame references on your chart right now without using Tracker DWM? My daily, weekly, and monthly charts have 400, 1800, and 5000 days of data loaded respectively. There's no way I would ever consider loading that much data onto my trade entry chart. The chart would load way too slowly. There's also no way during the pre-market session or during the RTH trading session that I would ever want to wait tens of seconds or even minutes locked out of the platform while ninja scripts are loading onto the chart. Plus, I want RTH daily, weekly, and monthly charts. NinjaTrader has no way to do that other than to use a 1440 minute chart with an RTH session template to get our daily RTH chart. That still leaves me with no weekly or monthly RTH chart. Enter Tracker DWM. It gives you the means to fix both those issues. Tracker DWM plots highs, lows, opens, and closes for both the current and previous period, plus one EMA and up to two SMAs for each of the daily, weekly, and monthly timeframes. Let's walk through the features of Tracker DWM using the toolbar menu. Visible toggles the indicator on and off. Timeframes lets you pick the time frame plotted. In between is the feature submenu for selecting leader lines, price labels, right or left alignment of the labels, time frame expansion, removing overlapping labels, a fade feature, a statistic summary, and a status information box. The indicator updates once daily on the close of the first bar of the new RT8 session, so it is extremely light on computer resources. For the weekly and monthly moving averages, you will see a vertical line forms 
which represents how the value has changed through the ongoing week or month. The direction of the trace tells you trend direction during the current period. Okay, I confess to rushing through the features so that I could spend more time showing trade examples. First, I suggest you try tracking the higher time frame references by hand for a few weeks. You really need to see for yourself that this is not some sort of gimmick where I'm just cherry picking in hindsight what I show you. Do it by hand to see that you can plot these references in advance. Then watch to see what happens. I find trade opportunities with Tracker DWM similar in nature, at least the ones that stand out to my eye. Let's look at March 25th, for example, which for me is the ongoing session when I started recording this video. Here we see our reference lines to establish our starting playing field for the session. I turn Tracker VP off, but have Tracker RTH on to mark the Globex low and the session open. You can see some overlap of the references tracked by the Tracker indicators, which is entirely intentional. Tracker MP was tracking the March 9th open gap, as shown here, and which I mark here. I keep Tracker MP off screen on my right hand monitor so that it remains within my field of vision. I think you will agree that price is testing the five separate price references shown. You can see ranging behavior where two of the references are close together. You can likely also see multiple good entries for trades larger than the typical scalp. How specifically you trade determines what you personally consider a good entry. Here, I marked four that meet my criteria. All four exhibit the same qualities. As an aside, we were one time framing down on the daily market profile chart. So trading up to test the prior day low and then selling off is a classic pattern all traders should have anticipated. Here is the pre-market chart for February 1st. See how strongly and precisely price reversed from the previous month open. While you might not have gotten a trade entry here, at least you obtained some context to explain the reversal. Next is March 5th. See how price failed to hold the confluence of the March open and 20-day EMA, then came down to and ranged sideways around the 2020 close, 2020 high, and 2021 open before gaining traction at the previous month open for a move higher. Remember this confluence as we will see it again in the next slides. Here we move forward to Monday, March 7th to see we again sell off from that confluence area back down to the previous month close before reversing higher. Okay, one more time on March 10th, back down to test and hold our confluence area for a move higher. So those were several recent examples of multiple significant tests of higher time frame references. I specifically emphasized monthly opens and closes and daily moving averages. Now let me ask you this, who is reversing the market at these references? And can you think of any retail trading method that would have you prepared to try to profit from these price reversals? Let's continue by looking now at March 18th. Here we see testing of the all-time high, which is the same as saying the current year high. Focus in on the drop base drop type supply zone here. It did not form relative to structure, like up here or here, for example, to break the lows. Instead, it formed at the previous month high, formed weeks earlier, which is why I say in my videos that supply and demand zones are secondary references that often form around and after primary references like this monthly resistance line had formed. Look lower and we see the previous week close hold as support and then a later price sells off for a large swing lower from the previous month high. Again, let's ask, who is reversing the market? In what time frames and what references are they using? Lastly, does this look to you like it fits any conventional retail day trading methods? One last example from March 24th. We see an impulse up, base sideways, then one last leg up on a couple big exhaustive bars into the prior day's open and VPOC confluence. In a slightly larger context, 
it was a pullback to the VPOC from which the prior day had sold off sharply. Here we have a shorter term rally in the context of an intermediate term sell-off. So price had potential to sell off from our identified key reference confluence. There is never any guarantee, but with a suitable confirmation entry pattern, it was worth a trade down to the logical target shown. Another way you can see past price reactions at your moving averages is to look directly at your daily, weekly, and monthly charts. Count the reaction shown on these charts. Tracker DWM is not intended to change your beliefs. Instead, it is intended to make it easier for you to trade them. I think Tracker DWM embodies elegance in its simplicity. Its power comes from overcoming the data and charting limitations and in its simple organized presentation. That way, you can focus on the trading. As I said before, doing it by hand requires enough work that most retail traders will not do it. But after you confirm a few examples for yourself, I will let you decide whether you think the big traders are absolutely aware of these references. I consider Tracker DWM my best example of great trades hiding in plain sight. I invite you to give Tracker DWM a try. Our subscription pricing adds just pennies to your trading cost, and we have a cancel anytime policy. So what's stopping you from being a better trader? If you have found this video helpful, let us know by hitting the like and subscribe buttons and leaving us a comment below. Until next time, green trades everyone.